All right. How'd it go again? Um, hey. No. No, that wasn't it. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, what's up, guys? No, 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 no. I'm getting close. Um, shoot. Oh, yeah. What's up, my nuggets? Mr. Phantasmo here. Um, a little bit about me. It, for those of you who are, uh, for those of you who who forgotten who I was and uh, who I still am today as a person. Um, I was but a man who um, posted quite a few anonymously unanonymous videos onto the internet and. People seemed to enjoy them, probably because they were dumb, but also because they loved to hear my voice. At least that's what I tell myself every night, still, when I'm going to bed. And when I was going to bed the other night and I told myself this, I asked myself, Self, why are you abandoning all of these people? Um, there are obvious answers, such as... Um, my internet connection problem issues, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I could go on all day and, and complain and moan, or I said to myself, I could be the guy who makes the problem the solution. So somehow I said, I'm going to turn my internet problem into a solution, which I couldn't figure out how to do that. I'm pretty sure that's impossible. But I did say to myself, self this is the longest soliloquy I've ever had with myself. Um, I said, let's, let's make do with what we have. And just because you don't have that good of internet, or maybe not even internet at all, doesn't mean you can't play video games. I'm not going to let that ruin my experience or any of my other subscribers' experience. And then I got on YouTube just to make sure I had subscribers still before I started this. And I was reassured. I think there's like three or four guys still hanging out. So kudos to you guys. Way to stick around until the end. And because little did you know that the end was only the beginning. So now uh, I figured I'd just, I'd just sit here and talk to you guys for, you know, like an hour or two. Just, just chit-chatting. Really just over a, over a blank screen. Nothing, nothing here. Nothing here coming your way. So... If you're easily squeamish or self-centered, you might want to turn the other cheek and get on out of here, all right? No, I'm kidding, you guys. Um, it's been too long, and I know that. Um, it's been crazy with my life and all that, but, but uh, you know, that's for, that's for another, another video. If you're here on my first video since forever... You're probably expecting some sort of video games, and you say, yes, we are. Why don't you just get on with it? Stop talking around it. Stop beating around the old bushel berries, and just get on to the good stuff. We don't care about your voice. We don't care about this black screen. All we care about, well, you know what? That's kind of selfish of you, and I think that we should just settle down a bit, maybe, and and maybe we could we could just appreciate the black screen. Maybe just the color black in general. The absence of all other colors. You know? So, I don't know. Maybe we should just talk about that. Maybe I'll end the video here, and in the comments section, you could tell me what you think about the... Co okay. Alright. Now I went from four subscribers to one. You see how I can do that? This is more of a tutorial video on how to be really bad on the internet, more than anything. Just letting you know that I still have it. Okay. Are we ready to do this? Are we ready to get down and dirty? Theme music is an interesting thing. Some of you might already be able to tell what is about to happen just by the music that is slowly faded in into the background. If you don't, can't say I blame you. Can't say I wasn't expecting it. But, you know, this is a game that... Uh, that I think is going to come out of left field for a lot of you guys and maybe out of just the the river over the over the bleachers for most of you 
Um, it's a game that I would have never, ever thought myself playing in a million years. Um, but then again, looking back into my previous gaming history, that's where a lot of the best games that I've played, in my opinion, have come from. Uh, just games that I wasn't expecting, games that uh, break away from the the mold that I was in for so long with uh, first-person shooters and, and stuff like that. Um, I feel I feel so old. I feel so old having a gaming history, but uh, nonetheless, let's get right down to business. Fade in. Are you still stumped? Do you still not know what's going on? Okay. If you don't, I'd say you're probably in the majority, so not to fear. My goal now is to explain to you, or at least try to explain to you, what this game is, how you're supposed to play it, and why it's fun, and also make a couple videos showing you what I've learned kind of weird because I don't consider myself an expert or even that good of a player but I do think that I've come a long way since I first started playing this game by the way this game is called Hearthstone or Hearthstone depending on uh, what side of the border you're from so Hearthstone is a card game boom there we just address the elephant in the room everybody knows that what Mr. Phantasmo has been doing in his free time has just been playing a, a card game um, online, though, with fake cards that you can't hold. It's like Pokemon, but worse. Just kidding. It's not. So this is, uh, you know, just calling it a card game doesn't really justify the fun about it. I don't know. I never played uh, Magic the Gathering or anything like that because that was kind of weird and... Um, I didn't really, it wasn't really big in my school. That's more why I didn't play it. I think if it was big in my school, I could, I could easily forego the weirdness to incorporate myself into that kind of culture, but I didn't. So never played magic or anything like that. Uh, apparently this is similar, but like I said, it's all online. It is also a free to play game that is currently as of today's date in closed beta. Um, soon to be open beta I'm pretty sure um, I got a beta key um, this game is made by Blizzard I sign up for all of Blizzard's betas um, for no particular reason mostly for Diablo and then I figured if I got any other beta keys I'd just give them away and instead of giving this one away I know I was a little selfish and I actually used it for myself checked it out and within the first night of playing it I was officially um, pretty pretty darn addicted to it so uh, this is what I've been playing, and the greatest thing about this game is because it's a card game, because it's a turn-based game, um, it's mostly online, it's primarily online, but because it's turn-based and because it requires so little internet, I can actually play this on my space internet. I call it space internet because I'm pretty sure it comes from satellites, which are in space and are also really slow and really limited at the internet, but that's okay. I'm gonna try not to bring up my internet anymore. It's a sore spot for me, and it's probably a sore spot for you guys, because it's primarily the reason that I haven't been posting videos, and primarily the reason that I'm probably sitting at Panera Bread right now, uploading this to give to you guys, but that's neither here nor there. How long have we been talking now without absolutely anything happening? Okay, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it, and it's gonna be rough. It's going to be rough for me because I don't really know what I'm talking about. And if you've ever had someone explain to you something that they didn't really know themselves, then that's that might be what this is going to be. Although, I wanted to wait. I waited for a while until I had a pretty good understanding. But I'm sure that there will be people that have played longer or played shorter and just are smarter that are like, dude, this was wrong, this was wrong. By all means, in the comment section below, correct me as much as you can, because that's what I'm all about. I'm all about getting the corrections and becoming better at this game. This game takes a lot of, um, I consider it an easy game to kind of pick up and, and, and get the hang of, hopefully, you guys will agree, but also it takes a lot 
of knowledge and practice and expertise to become a master, which I have not become a master, but that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, I thought a lot about um, which area I should show you guys as far as how to uh, how to, to try and explain what this game is. Also, if you already know what this game is, it's probably going to be really boring. You, you might just want to wait until the next episode. Because this game will, this episode will probably just be me explaining um, what I think this game is. So I think we're going to go ahead and go into practice, which is not against real people, but it's also, um, I don't think there's a time limit per turn, and, it, and it'll be easier for me to explain to you guys um, what is going on in the game. So, like I said, this is a card game. We go into practice, and here we go. So the car, the the game is consisted of um, it's it's made up of nine different classes, um, and these classes are basically your player for the card game. So you can pick a class, and that is the class that you will use during your game. Um, like you saw here, these are the basic decks, which I just figured I'd stick to these uh, for now. These are your um, custom decks. You can make uh, you can you can you can title them differently and and stuff like that, but. Um, you can also have like if you if you just want this is the warrior class if you just want nine different warrior uh, decks then you can have that you can um, always customize your decks in here your collection you can look at your collection and there's uh, you know all these cards for all the different classes and you can just go through and and uh, you know do all that but I'm already I'm already getting off topic so we go to the basic decks nine classes in the game um, you can switch throughout them after every game you can only have one per game so let's just say that we start at the beginning with a warrior so we're gonna play warrior I don't I'm trying not to confuse myself as I'm doing this so we'll pick a warrior why not um, expert uh, I don't know what would be let's just let's just go normal normal AI we're fighting against normal computers and let's let's go ahead and fight against something that I would consider easy uh, maybe the, maybe the shaman. Okay, fight against the shaman. Hopefully he's an easy computer. So, what you do is, you basically, uh, uh, it's like, it's, it works like a card game in the sense that, I mean, that's all it is. You, you play cards, and then your opponents plays cards, and then you try to, uh, you know, defeat the other person's cards, and ultimately, um, get the other get the other character down to zero health and then you win um, th the more I explain it without actually showing you guys what it is the more nerdy it sounds so um, I'm not quite sure okay there we go um, okay so here we go we're in our first game this is our first this might be some of your guys first experience with this game altogether so you might be already overwhelmed so what I'm gonna show you right now is um, the game starts out uh, as you can see over here, it said I go first. So I'm gonna be first. Um, you start out with one mana. Uh, these are representative of mana. Right down here is my total mana. Right now my first turn hasn't come up yet, so I only have zero mana. Once my first turn starts, I will have one mana with which to maybe cast one of these monsters onto the battlefield. Um, right now, this one costs two mana to cast, this one costs four, and this one costs five. So technically, if I just stuck with these cards, I would not be able to cast this until my second turn, or this until my fourth, or this until my fifth. So the reason it's showing you your first three cards, or first four cards if you go second, um, is so that you can mulligan them out, or rep replace them, as you can see, keep or replace cards, um, so you can get a better starting hand. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to this too, because I'll be able to play it my second turn, if nothing else. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. It doesn't get rid of them um, altogether. It will actually just put them back into my deck and shuffle them up and then give me two new cards to replace them. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do right now. And it's going to give me another two and uh, zero mana. But that is uh, that zero mana is kind of a spell and a buff for my, my other creatures. Um, it gives them charge, which means that they can attack immediately. So right now, I can't do anything. Um, I have one mana, and uh, I can't give a friendly minion charge because I don't have any friend friendly minions in play. So I'm just going to go ahead and end my turn, and he's going to 
um, quite possibly do nothing, which is exactly what he did. Okay, so now I have um, options. Each each character, uh, no matter who you play, has their own special hero ability, and it always costs two mana. As you can see, his is uh, summon a random totem, which summons just like a, a little minion on the battlefield that'll give him some sort of buff, or just, you know, be a little minion out there. Uh, mine is to gain two armor, which as you can see, the health right here, 30 and 30. You all start out with 30. If I were to click this, I would get two armor right here. That would basically bring me up to 32 health, but uh, I don't really need that right now. And since I have two mana, I can either play my little Murloc army or I can play a War Axe, which some uh, classes are able to have a weapon, which lets your character physically attack either minions on the board or the other hero themselves. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and summon this guy. Now, I know this is... You might even need to slow this down to really uh, fully uh, realize what's going on here. Also, um, you know, the more I feel like the more games you watch, and this is just coming from someone who was confused themselves in the beginning, the more games you watch, the, the more you will understand. Um, so if, if this is already overwhelming for you, I assure you if you just, if you just stick around, it will get better. Um, this guy, so if you look at him, he's a two mana cost. This is his attack right here, that 2 to the left. I can't really go over there because it won't let me. But so his attack is 2 and his health is 1. So he has 1 health and 2 attack. Also, if you see in the middle, he has a battle cry. A battle cry means it happens as soon as you put that card into play. So as soon as I put that card into play, he's also going to summon a 1-1 one, one Murloc Scout. And what 1-1 one, one means is the first number is the attack and the second number corresponds with the health. So it will have a 1. It will also... Here, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. Let's just let's just make plays. So as you can see, the battle cry, which happens immediately, as you can see, oh, it gives a description on the other side. You're all like, we've already read this. We don't even need to ex get it explained to us, but that's okay because I'm going to explain it to everyone. So it does something when you play it from your hand. So th this does something by spawning this little guy. There's a guy in the background too, but I don't think I don't think he's. Uh, I think he's just photobombing this. I don't think he comes into play anytime soon. So I could give them charge if I really wanted to. But um, from my experience, uh, the thing that will lead to the win the most is uh, just basically counteracting every card that he puts down, removing that off the board if you can, and then eventually when he has no cards and you have a bunch of minions, you can attack him and win. So I'm going to go ahead and end my turn. Um, Basically, you want to completely eradicate anything he puts on the board. And, uh, okay, so now we have this. Now we have this guy. So he summoned a random totem. This is the only totem that he could have summoned that has attack. Most just have uh, two health and zero attack, but give him some sort of buff. So, like I said, um, my goal when I play this, and it, uh, again, it might not be the, the proper goal, but the goal that I have when I play this is to just completely clear his stuff off the board and keep as much of my minions on the board as possible. So, I'm going to go ahead and attack him with this. Now, I could attack him with this, and it would kill him. Because when you when you, when you you attack with something, um, if I attack him into here, I will do 2 damage, which is kind of overkill because it only has 1 health. Um, which is why I decided to attack with this. Also, when I attack with this, I will be doing 1 damage to his health, but in turn... He will also be doing one damage to my health. It's a trade-off when you attack. When either of the minions attack, they trade their damage and their health with each other. So if you see right now, I can go ahead and attack him. Boom. He's dead. Now those those both got eliminated, but I still have one on the board. And I still have three mana, because I gained another mana crystal yet again from last round. So if you look here, I could summon more Morlocks, or I could summon a War Axe. I could give this guy charge, even though um, what charge means is when you play a character, um, here, I'll go ahead and I'm going to summon this because it uses all of my mana, and I think it's very efficient to use all of your mana every turn to a certain extent. So also, as you can see, this battle cry, very similar to the Murloc, which is this guy. Boom. Also summons more minions. I will be, I will be minion heavy for, for this entire game. But if you see these Z's coming out, they're taking a little a little nap. Um, when you play normal minions in the battlefield that that uh, don't have charge as their battle cry, they will just sleep for a turn. Um, they're very lazy. They need to get all the all all good uh, all good foods from the camp and get them all nutritioned up. 
So they're just gonna they're just gonna kind of stay there um, until the next turn, and then they will be able to attack. So I could again I could give him charge or him charge, which would let him attack immediately. But uh, like I said, since I like to just kind of uh, control the board more than uh, than go after him, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and let these guys be. But since this guy has a green circle around him, means he can still attack this turn, and there's nothing on the board, I will go ahead and pop him in the head for two. Now. You notice he didn't take damage. Uh, that's when you, anytime you attack the opponent's hero, your creatures don't take damage. But if they attack other creatures, then they do take damage. Are you, are you guys with me? Are you staying with me? All right, we're gonna go ahead and end the turn. See what he does. He goes so fast. Okay, so this guy has charge. Boom. Okay, I don't know why he did that. Um, again, but that's also how I used to play. I used to kind of ignore the board, and then just go for this guy. Um, if I were him in that situation, um, I would have probably attacked this guy because he has three health and he also does two damage, which if you only have one health, that's a really good trade as far, you know, in my opinion, I could kill this guy with any one of these guys because they all have at least one attack and he only has one health. So I'll give you a second to try and figure out which one I'm going to attack him with and then I'm going to do it. Okay. Seconds up this guy. I'm going to attack this guy with this guy because he only has one health. These guys have three and one. This guy has one health, but he also has two attack. I hope this is kind of making sense. I don't think I'm quite explaining it the way I idealized explaining it, but if you just do simple math numbers, you'll see that this is this is probably the best trade because he only has one health to give and one attack. He has barely enough, just enough attack to kill him, and uh, this guy is going to be doing way more damage than he needs to to this guy. Um, so there. Boom. I kept my two best creatures on the board um, overall. So I now have four mana. I could attack this. I could use this axe. I could give him charge. I could summon more Murlocs. I could do all of these in my turn. But the weapons I usually only bring out when I need to kill something on the board. And since I don't have to kill anything, I'm not going to use that. So then you're like, well, you still have two mana. Of course I'm going to spawn this, because I want I want Murlocs out the yin yang. All right, that was kind of weird. He just like he switched fathers right there. That was his father. Then adoption occurred, and that was weird. Okay, so but since I have two mana still, if you if you have at least two mana, that's why they put this hero power in. This is the only reason they put it. in. No, it's not. But if you have two mana, I might as well gain two armor. Boom, two armor. So technically, I have 29 health. Um, since these guys can't attack anything else, I'm going to go ahead and attack him. And just like that, I am already starting to overwhelm him on the board. Now, there are such things as spells that are AoE, which is area of effect, which can completely, uh, almost completely wipe this board. But um, So you don't want to play too, too many minions, but I think four is a fair number for this early in the game. Let's go ahead and end the turn and see what kind of business he's going to throw out at me. He has four mana. Okay, so he pets he puts down this guy. Whoa, what was that? It's a shield. A shield just came out of that guy. And what that means is, if you'll see uh, on his card, it says taunt. And now what taunt means is that you cannot, if I wanted to attack this guy with this, I can't. I can't do this. You must attack the minion with taunt. So taunt is pretty much a defense for your own character, um, which coincidentally enough, I just drew a guy with taunt as well. So if I put this guy down and uh, I don't know, I let, let, just for just for sake of example. Now, if I just end my turn and don't attack with any of these guys, which is not what I'm going to do, but if I did that, then this guy could not attack any of these guys until he killed this, which goes the same for me. So I have to kill this guy before I can go through to the hero again. So he basically put down a little layer of defense. Now he has five health and three attack. So it's now it now turns into a math game. Now I could I could get get rid of all three of these guys to kill that one guy, or I could go down here to my wonderful axe. I'm gonna go ahead and just play it before I explain it. So there it goes. It pops in right there. Now, um, weapons are similar to minions in the fact that they have attack, um, but their little shield 
broken shield number is the durability, which is how many times you can use that weapon. Which might have confused some of you guys in the beginning. You're like, well, why aren't you just getting your weapon out instantly so you can do three damage every turn? No, you can only use it twice. So, um, I can attack into him. I will also take three damage, but that three damage that I take will also prevent, it will, uh, it will keep all these guys up. And basically your life uh, while you're playing is more or less just a resource. Like, it doesn't matter if you have 30 life or if you have one life at the end of the game. As long as your opponent has zero and you have the more, you have more life, then you won. So if you can manage your life um, efficiently, then, then by all means. So now that I do that, he's down to two health. And I can just go ahead and kill him with one of these guys. Um, again, I don't want to kill him with this guy because he has three health. And that would be an even trade. And I'm not about even trades. I'm about one health, even though he does three damage. So there we go. We've successfully cleared the board. We also have a taunt ourselves to protect these guys, especially this little mulligany guy. And we'll uh, go ahead and, and attack away. Again, I could give this guy ch I could give this guy charge since he's sleeping on the job, but also you can only use your weapon once per turn. All right, let's go ahead and end the turn. I'm looking at the time on this audio, and it's already going insanely long. Okay, here's a spell. Here's a spell. It costs him three mana. Oh, and this guy has charge, so he's going to attack instantly. Okay, I'm going to explain what that is. Also, in here, as you can see, when the cards are played, uh, it gives you kind of a recap. So, uh, if you remember, I attacked uh, that. I attacked him. I attacked the taunt guy. I attacked the hero. Uh, Thrall is, is this guy's name. Uh, then he used Hex, which transforms a minion into a 0-1 frog with taunt. So, basically, a Hex is, I don't like that minion. I'm going to get rid of it. But instead of just completely wiping it off the board, I will turn it into a 0-1 frog, which can't do any damage, but it's just kind of like, haha, you just got turned into a frog. So, um, also, it might be worth noting that you can only have two of, of each card in your deck. So, right near, I have, uh, these are Boulder Fist Ogres. I have both of my Boulder Fist Ogres. And since I've played this guy twice, I know that this guy is not going to come up anymore in my deck. Because um, you can only have two. So, he can only have two hexes. Um, and he wasted, he pretty much wasted one on that 2-2 two, uh, two, two taunt, but, you know, it, it is the computer. I wouldn't do that normally. Um, okay, so let's go, let's go here. Um, so we have this boar that we have to take care of. We also have 6 mana. Um, now I could attack him with my weapon here, but I do 3 damage with my weapon. Oops, he's, oh, you can like, you can talk to uh, people, but talking to the computer is uh, something that I'm doing right now. Okay, so... I could attack him with this, but it's three damage, and I kind of like to maximize my damage output with my weapon, so maybe if he had two health, I would whack at him, but um, since he only has one and not even three, I'm just going to go ahead and, and trade with this guy. Again, could trade with any of these guys. Um, actually, I could trade with this guy, and he would still be at two health, um, so if I wanted to completely maximize uh, my board presence, I guess I could do that. You know what? Um, I, you know, it's kind of a toss up here, depending on if I want more minions on the board or not, but I think I'm going to go ahead and, 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 uh, hit him just because, um, if this guy, uh, pulls out a spell that does damage to all my minions, um, this guy has a better chance of surviving with three health than he does with two health. Uh, again, I feel like I might be just rambling on and I'm going to, okay. So since I have six mana now, I'm just going to throw out one of these guys. Again, I could give him charge if I wanted, which would instantly do six damage to him. Which would hurt him a lot, but it also might. I also might need that charge later on. This guy is what he used. It also has charge, but since I'm out of mana, um, I'm also not just gonna go and whack him with my weapon. Because I, again, I want to keep these minions cleared off the board. Um, I'm basically just clearing off his minions and then hitting him for a couple every turn, and that's all I've really done. And as you can see, he's already down to half of his health, so I'm already halfway there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the turn um, without doing either of these. Okay, and he puts out a Boulder Fist Ogre of his own. Now, this is interesting. So he pretty much answered me with that. Um, now, uh, I have a lot of different things I could do here. I could, uh, you know, I could hit him with my weapon, which would give me, take six damage for me, which is kind of not ideal for me. Um, but I, I could hit him with this, and then I could hit him with both of these, and I could eliminate that and keep this guy up. Um, and I still have seven mana to spend. Um, or I could take a look at my I could take a look at my cards here. Um, I have um, these which I got last time, and I just picked up this one. 
which is an execute, which means I can destroy a damaged enemy minion. So any damaged enemy minion I can destroy. Damaged means that they just have some of their health missing. So, that being said, if I wanted to play this this turn, I just have to find a way to do some kind of damage to him, and then I can execute him. Now I could do damage with any of these guys, or myself, or this guy. This is where the later in the game you get, the more decisions you have to make. Personally, um, if it were me, which it is, so deal with it, I'm going to hit this guy. It's going to do only two damage to him and kill that guy, but it's going to damage him. Um, and you know, and, and for this guy only costing me two mana, um, I think that was a good trade because I'm going to go ahead and execute him. He's dead. Um, so if you look at it overall, I hit him with that little murloc, which cost me two mana, and then I executed him with the execute uh, that cost me one mana. So I used three mana to kill that Boulder Fist Ogre, which cost him six. So um, again, it gets more, even more in depth into the game as you, you want to constantly try to make these good trades um, with your cards. If you're making good trades and mana efficient trades against the other player, that means that they're making mana inefficient trades. And then in the long term, it's just inevitable that you're going to win. So I still have six mana. Um, again, I could use this charge guy and maybe armor up or something like that But I like to use the charge guys for surprise attacks like if he spawns something that has three health Boom, I can run him in there and keep all these guys on the field So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop down another ogre We're having an ogre party here, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit him for six and then hit him for two um, Again, I could hit him with uh, with my uh, weapon here or Check this out. He has seven health this guy's sleeping. Too bad he's sleeping, right? Because we could hit him for six, and then we could hit him for three, and he'd be negative two health, and we would win. If only there was a card that we had been holding on to the whole time that would give him charge, or the ability to attack instantly, that cost zero mana, that we so smartly had been holding on to. You know when you say so smartly, it doesn't make you seem so smart anymore, does it? We're not gonna attack him yet. Actually, yeah. We're gonna give the killing blow from yours truly. Me to you, buddy. Here you go. So boom, just like that. I only end with one card and 26 health and three guys on the board. He has more cards than me, but he has less health than me. So I win, okay? That is a typical game. Well, that's not a typical game because the computer kind of does weird things and uh, not necessarily the, the best plays. Um, but that's, that's, Hearthstone, that's Hearthstone in a nutshell. Um, I think uh, this is this was a good introductory video. Um, hopefully, it explained a little bit, and you guys are kind of on the same page as far as what the game is and and how to go about playing it, or at least how I go about playing it. Again, I don't know if I can stress this enough, and I'm really only going to stress it in the first episode. Um, I will probably make mistakes, and I will probably not make the best decisions as far as uh, what to play and, and how to use it and everything. But I play to the best of my abilities, and I also play. To have a lot of fun which this game is a lot of fun um don't let the uh you know it, it might not look fun although i i think it i think it does i think it transfers over well into being able to watch it and stuff especially when i start playing against actual people and with custom decks that i've made and you know uh in the arena and stuff like that um there's just so much there's so much different things to do in this game and it's it's different every single time you play it so uh, i think that it shares a lot um of of traits with with popular games that uh, are streamed and stuff. Uh, I unlocked a card because I leveled up. Uh, I don't know if you saw that um, the level of my guy. Your uh, your characters actually level up right now. My my uh, warrior is level 34. If I go over to my warlock, he's level 30. Um, which uh, next game we will actually be using the shaman. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video here, um, and then next time, uh, I I think I think honestly. Um, what I feel most comfortable with is going through all the different classes at least one game with all the different classes I don't think it'll take as long as the first one did because I did a lot of rambling in the beginning But we're gonna we're gonna stay on track next next uh, next video and uh, So basically what that means is um, for those of you that already know about this video or already know about this uh, this game It might be kind of a kind of a waste or kind of a boring to you But I'm gonna go through I'm gonna go through all of the different classes because as soon as we get done with practice uh, we basically go straight to uh, real opponents, 
um, real playing online against other people who are going to be a lot better than these computers. So the first nine episodes um, will just be kind of running down through each of the classes, and then after that we get down into the real meat and potatoes of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, wow, this is the longest I've ever talked in a really long time. i got to take a nice gulp of water right after this, but... Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it, it, like I said, this is a game that uh, has really uh, saved me from, you know, the just the utter abyss of, of sitting on a computer looking for jobs all day. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, even though I'm, I'm at my parents' house and um, they don't have the best internet, I can still sit down and unwind to multiplayer, online multiplayer um, on, like, I don't know, like 0.2 megabytes per second internet upload or, or download. Probably less than that on upload, but uh, uh, it's really cool. And uh, I hope you guys will check it out or at least give it a look. Like I said, it's in closed beta right now, but it's going to go into open beta really soon, if not already by the time that I put this video up. So, um, yeah, if you're, if you're interested in seeing more, then uh, be sure and tune in to the next episode. And I will see you guys then. I hope you enjoyed, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace, Nuggets.